All right, guys, today we'll talk about the five most important habits of every successful aspiring front-end developer. So if you want to be making money writing code and if you want to make a career change to go from whatever you are doing now to professional front-end web developer, then this video is going to help you massively. So today I'm going to show to you what are the most important habits that any of you should have. And I have put together this list of habits based on my experience of coaching people and seeing people actually learning code. And from my experience of someone who learned code from scratch by himself. Okay. So these are not some habits that any other YouTuber is going to tell you about, not some regurgitated information, but actually habits that will surprise you in a pleasant way. Okay. So the first thing is stick or twist. What is stick or twist? First of all, stick or twist means when you arrive to a certain destination, to a certain checkpoint, are you going to be satisfied where you are or are you going to make more sacrifices to get where you want to get? And this is not just when you are learning code, but in your career as well. So for example, you could be learning programming by yourself and then you land a job at a startup and it's paying you 80 grand a year. Now, from that point, you can decide, hey, I just want to cruise from now. I just want to be like hanging around and see what happens. Or you could double down from that moment and learn more, surround yourself with mentors, get more mentorships, get into different trainings and whatnot, and just keep improving yourself, keep investing yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are the biggest asset that you can invest your money. Okay. You'll have the biggest ROI. So if you put your, let's say $10,000 into your own education, there is a very, very high chance of you reaping the rewards of that investment. So I'm not talking about necessarily working with me, but later in your life, you'll be having opportunities to join different mentorships, to join different programs where you'll be learning new skills. Okay. Because to go from zero to remote developer that works for a startup is one thing and going from 80k a year to half a million a year that's an even bigger jump and it's going to require more effort uh, in terms of like money and time investment from your side so stick or twist means creating this habit where you put yourself in a situation where you might be uncomfortable okay in the short term but in the long term, it's going to get you a lot of rewards. That's habit number one. Habit number two is being your best or your harshest critic. Look, nobody is going to tell you the truth. I am the type of guy that's going to call you out whenever you are, you know, not doing well enough if you work with me directly. Otherwise, on YouTube, I can't do much. But at the end of the day, you will be your harshest critic. And if you teach yourself to be like, oh, this is good enough to pass, you won't get that far. That's why everyone around you is like mediocre. That's why everyone around you has shitty jobs. That's why everyone around you is doing things they don't like because they just do the bare minimum, the bare minimum to pass. Because we've been taught that in school. We've been taught in school that if you do just enough, you can get a five, that's the, wrong, that's the system in Europe, from zero to 10, you get graded. And if you get over five, you're passing the exam. But in order to be like a true professional and to get the most out of your life, not just coding, not just from learning code, you need to teach yourself to go from like, Instead of 0 to 10, you should be like 0 to 15 or 0 to 20. Always, whenever I create something, whenever I create a website, a web app and whatnot, once you're done with it, take a step back and look at the thing that you've just created. Is it good enough? Probably not. Most of the time, it's not good enough. And if you look inside yourself, you know that you could have done better. And you should do better. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, boy, I'm wasting my time, blah, blah, blah. You're not wasting your time. That extra 5% is going to require 80% more effort from your side, but it's going to give you 300% more rewards if you teach yourself to go the extra mile every single time. And here I want to bring another idea. 
Oftentimes I ask people, hey, like what's your biggest challenge in your coding journey? Sometimes some will say CSS. And then I'm like, okay, so what are you doing to fix your CSS issue? You, for example, you don't know how to use layouts or how to create proper layouts. Well, nothing. What do you mean? So you know you have a problem, but you're not doing anything about it? And they're like, yeah, is this smart? Probably not. And now what I'm trying to teach you here is that whenever you catch yourself having a problem or figuring out the fact that you have a missing gap of knowledge in one certain area, that means that is the moment when you should double down on that thing and actually try to improve it. Take one, two, three days to fix that problem and then you'll become a savage. If you have problems with arrays, instead of like skipping them and hoping you'll get them later, spend two, three, four, five days working with arrays and you'll get better. If you figure out, okay, I have problems with JavaScript, then spend five days learning just JavaScript, okay? Like, I don't know, I just, it, it, it's too general, but whenever you catch yourself having a problem with something or whenever you feel like you don't do something well enough, just double down on that thing, fix it, and then move on. The next thing is time management. You have to teach yourself to time manage. Last week, I think I posted just two videos. And the reason why I only posted two videos is because of my lack of time management. So instead of like prioritizing shooting videos, content for YouTube, Instagram, writing content for LinkedIn and whatnot, instead of doing that, I just f around and I hope for the best, but that's wrong. For you, if you just hope to find time to write code, well, you're never gonna find time. You have to make it as cliche as it sounds. And probably you heard that from other BS influencers on YouTube and Instagram and whatnot. It's true. You have to figure out a way where you can put coding in your calendar and actually following through with it. Super genius. Now, there are days where you don't feel like doing anything related to coding. And that's the worst mistake that you can make. Now, some other people will say, hey, mental health, mental health, take a break. Doesn't work like that. You need to figure out, okay, if I feel really bad today, I should do something related to coding anyway, no matter what. Even if you just watch a stupid tutorial or if you watch some person life code something somewhere, just do that. But feel that time that you have during that day when you don't feel like doing anything related to code, fill it in with code. You have to teach yourself to do that because right now, if you want to make a career change, you cannot have code that's something that you do on the side. It has to be the main thing and your job is going to be the second thing. So if coding is the main thing for you, make sure you do it every day, even if you do not feel like it. I cannot stress this enough. Fuck those influencers that tell you to take a day off and whatnot. Because when you take the day off, there is some Indian dude that's in the US on a visa that's working harder than you, which is gonna get your job. Just think about this. I'm not against any Indians in the US with visas, blah, blah, but I hope you understand. There is someone else that has the same situation as you, that's even more pissed off on their situation than you, and they are doing more than you, and they're gonna take your job. They will take the bread from your plate. They will take the food from your plate, and then you'll be home uh, watching Netflix because you don't feel like doing it. If you wanna be like top 1%, if you wanna be like an athlete, like a professional, you have to do things when you don't feel like it. And I'm not perfect, I'm messing around, and I'm, I'm skipping days sometimes, but again, you have to teach yourself to do stuff when you don't feel like it. If this is your main thing, if you wanna make coding your main thing, you have to do whatever you have to do to get some coding done every single day. Otherwise, you'll be a loser and then you'll feel bad because you are not doing whatever you know you could be doing. The last habit is to ask for help whenever you get stuck. And I've learned about this habit in my kind of second job because I was having two jobs at the same time, uh, two coding jobs at the same time. So I was working 16 hours per day. And in one of these jobs, I was like, trying to do everything, but because of my lack of knowledge and lack of understanding, I was just getting stuck all the time. And instead of asking for help, I was just stuffing my ego, you know? I was keeping my ego safe instead of asking my mentor and whatnot to help me out. This is really bad because it's not about you. 
like getting the code done is not about you necessarily, it's about the client that paid my company to get something done. I had the responsibility to deliver something to your client and now you have that responsibility to deliver something to yourself. And when you have problems, whenever you write some code and you're not sure about if it's done right or not, whenever you have a question that you cannot get an answer from Google or from Stack Overflow, maybe you don't know how to ask the question, that's the moment when you should be having a mentor. If you do not have a mentor that you can ask for help whenever you get stuck, then what's gonna happen? You're gonna mess it up for yourself. Not for me, not for the other dude, but for yourself. So if you want an unfair advantage, if you may, then you need to have someone that's smarter and better than you that can help you out whenever you get stuck. And I had this at work all the time and it helped me tremendously. Okay, so this is what my clients have. They work with me and I help them with all these things. Now, if you wanna have the same thing, what you can do is you can apply for a free consultation call to work with me directly. Make sure you fill in your answers properly because I am running at full capacity and I cannot take like hundreds of people per month. So now I'm limiting myself at four people per month, okay? So if you wanna be part of the mentorship program that I have, you can see the details for that in the website that's linked in the description. Apply for a free consultation call and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.